Hello Spooky Fam and welcome back to Chamber of Horrors. I'm Mercy Desdemona and as usual, later in the episode I will be joined by Viri Adams to do trick or trivia. If you are the weird kid grown weird adult and you like all things horror, true crime, weird theories, and oddities, consider becoming a member of the Spooky Fam. And don't forget to check out our friends over at Goth to Grave and also our collaboration movement spooky babes collaborative where we have some pretty neat stuff going on without further ado let's get into tonight's picture tonight's picture is called rent a pal and i actually stumbled across this while scrolling and i got bored one night and it looked weird and i was like yeah we're totally gonna check this out because it was so odd by the description alone you probably wouldn't check it out it sounds really mundane and really boring however what you don't realize is that it's basically a film that's so eerie that it didn't even need to use any paranormal or monsters or even a hell lot of gore to scare you. Because, I mean, come on, what's crazier than somebody being driven into madness by the same old, same old mundane life, right? Let's get into it. So, we basically follow this guy named David, and David's a little lonely. And he does a lot of those um, dating tape things, you know what I mean? And he's always watching them and all that stuff, hoping to find love. Because all he does is sit and take care of his mother, who has dementia. His father died ten years prior. It's kind of strange that I remember that, but it's said a lot throughout the movie. Um, so David is kind of like your average dude and I think that's what makes this so creepy and unique. So he's usually hitting a dead end, you know, because he lives with his mom and you know, like things are a little bit weird and he doesn't really know how to talk to people. So eventually down the line he ends up matching after he makes a new tape, he ends up matching with a girl named Lisa. And of course when he shows up he realizes he forgot his wallet, so of course the lady's like, you can't, you can't give me your match, right? you gotta give it back until you come back with that wallet. So he runs home and gets his wallet, and by the time he returns to the store or such, Lisa has matched up with somebody else. So of course he's devastated, and so he finds this tape with a gentleman on it called Rent-A-Pal. And obviously it's like some self-help tape for those who don't know how to talk to people. No judgment, whatever you gotta do to get better at it, I suppose. Um, but he starts to slowly descend into madness with this tape and go a little bit cuckoo bananas. Now, um, the one thing that I have found is after the movie, you will be hearing the guy's voice from rent a pal over and over and over again in your head. I have my notes with me this time, so I'm not so frazzled. Um, so we fast forward a little bit and he ends up being able to go on this date with Lisa after all. And it's adorably awkward. Um, they're both kinda outcasts, kinda weird. She's a caregiver as well, so she understands what he's going through. They go on this weird date. It's kinda cheesy and wonky. Um, what would you think of that date? It's pretty cheesy, huh? Well, they get back to his place, things get a little kissy-kissy, and all of a sudden, the tape of Andy starts playing, and David has a very weird reaction that kind of spooks Lisa, and rightfully so. I mean, he starts getting a little bit weird about it. Um, as if, like, somebody, like, in person just, like, walked in and caught them doing something. Um, so his reaction is a little crazy and his behavior starts to be a little weird. So Lisa's like, okay, this is a little bit much. Now I gotta give props to the actor because he portrayed this role very well. Um, and I think that's why it was really, really eerie, you know. Um, fast forward again, no pun intended. Uh, he basically gets so obsessed with this tape that there's this scene where his mom's at the table and of course remember she has dementia and she has ruined his rent-a-pal date. 
this makes him go completely berserk, like 120% berserk. He ends up smacking her with the tape, this poor woman. She lands on the floor. He runs to the video store like a maniac and is mad because a lot of copies are out. And so he's freaking out. And even the clerk's like, whoa, okay, fine. If you find a copy, just take it. Just get out of here. It's on the house, you know. He rips a copy out of a guy's hand. He rips one off the shelf. So he's a backup. He's completely obsessed with this tape because apparently in his mind, it's the only true friend that he has. So he watches the tape again after this. And it convinces him to get rid of his mother. And you all know what that means. So he goes and he be a little harsh to his mom. Not going to lie, this is kind of hard to watch because it is kind of like real life situations. And, you know, that's what made this so creepy. Um, so she's on the floor. He's being mean to her. And then he pushes her down the stairs and leaves her for dead. Meanwhile, Lisa pops by with this tray of lasagna. Tray of lasagna is trying to check up on things because things have been really weird. Uh, his mom got loose. She helped him find her. All that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. And she wanted to come over and check up on things. Well, he is going completely crazy. So when she walks in and she asks what's going on, he starts reciting the Andy tape to her. Yeah. You heard me. Reciting the tape. So he's slowly reciting and she can tell that there's something not right with David at this point and she hears a scream coming from downstairs which startles her and she breaks the tray of lasagna and it goes all over the floor. And for some reason this scene stuck out to me. Why? I don't know why. It's just how perfectly paced this lasagna tray drop was to the next scene for some reason it just stood out to me I don't know if I was hungry while I was watching this movie or what but it stuck out to me and like <laughs> it crashes to the floor and she kind of realized like oh shit things are about to get weird so she's trying to get away from him and he's still like reciting this tape and she slips in the lasagna and she's trying to get away Slippery lasagna. The lasagna, she's trying to get away, and of course, David tries to strangle her with none other than the broken Andy tape. Because this Andy tape is pretty much the whole thing. So he's trying to strangle her, and luckily for Lisa, she's a strong little girl, and she can like push him around and get him to get away, get away, get away, get away. And uh, she gets away from him, falls to the floor, she stabs him with scissors, she runs out the door. Instead of trying to, you know, figure out how to clear his name and be all, oh shit, this man David goes downstairs and you want to take one smart, quick guess at what this gentleman does. Give you a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, congratulations. You guessed correct. He sits down and watches the Andy tape. The weird thing about this one is that while it was slow, it wasn't slow enough to where you were bored to tears because you're like, okay, this guy's a little weird. What is he going to do next? So they always had you wondering. But it was so good because of how realistic it is. This could have been anyone. This could have been anyone's neighbor, relative, you know, loved one, cousin. It, work buddy anybody it could be everyday people and that's the coolest creep factor ever so i actually give this one 10 out of 10 and i highly recommend that you guys check it out i know that i kind of did a little spoilers in this review however it does not do the film justice so even with a little bit of spoilers you definitely need to check it out AJ, if you're watching this on your TV and you heard me say slippery lasagna several times, I bet you're giggling right now. It's okay. I kept a poker face to it. Yes. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to send you over to Ravi. She has a fantastic trick or trivia for you tonight. 
don't forget that you guys can play along in the comments because we do have some really cool creepy prizes for people that want to play along. Not to mention if you do go ahead and play along. Hashtag trip or trivia. Let's go. <laughs> Hello, I'm Reverend Adams, and I've burned myself enough times with a straightening iron today to be a female Freddy Krueger, so let's do some slasher trivia. Number one has two answers, all right? Aside from J Freddy vs. Jason and Jason Goes to Hell, what other movies did Freddy's glove appear in? A. Scream 4 B. Evil Dead 2 C. Bride of Chucky or D. Saw 3 Number two, Jason's original mask was sculpted out of a mask from what hockey team? A. Connecticut's New Haven Nighthawks B. The Cleveland Barons C. New York Islanders or D. Detroit Red Wings Number three, before his big break in his own movie, which now horror icon had the job of scattering fall leaves on the set for Halloween 1978? A. Robert England, B. Tobin Bell, C. Doug Bradley, or D. Tony Todd? Alright, so we'll get back to you next week with that, and I will leave you at Mercy's Mercy. Happy haunting! I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Chamber of Horrors and Trick or Trivia. Do comment down below if you've seen the film, or if not, are you going to check it out? Let me know. And let me know your thoughts when you do. Don't forget to put your answers to Trick or Trivia down in the comments down below. Check out all of our links in the description box below. And as always, stay spooky, stay weird, and don't forget that on January 27th at 8 p.m. Eastern, me and Riri are going to be live for our first ever Chamber of Horrors live. We're going to try to do them live once a month. So we got live trick or trivia, we've got live discussions, we're trying to see how we can get you guys to call in and be a part of the conversation, all that cool stuff. So stay tuned, stay weird, and stay spooky. Bye.